after a few years, I had walked down nearly every street in the city. Why do they paint the trees white? I had never once heard that an American president had ever visited the city. My list just keeps growing. There really is so much to explore. My name is Dennis Keen. You can say I'm a Kazakophile. So um, I've worked as the host of a television program called Discovering Kazakhstan. Um, I've for a lot for many years. I've uh, been a professional tour guide in Kazakhstan, and most recently, I've been a lecturer on Kazakh culture and languages at UCLA. Um, I'm originally from California, but I've been living mostly in Almaty for the last seven years. And uh, I first fell in love with Kazakh culture when I was in high school. When I was 17 years old, I went on an exchange program to Kazakhstan, lived with a Kazakh family, first learned about uh, Kazakh culture, and ever since then, it's been a love affair. I'm married to a Kazakh woman. My wife, Adisa, um, is from Uralsk. Uh, we have a son, Arman who is half Kazakh. We have a whole um, Kazakh family in Astana and in, in Western Kazakhstan. So to me, I feel like part of uh, a big Kazakh family. So it's a country that's very close to me. Walking Almaty is a project that I've done for, I think, almost five years now. So it started when, when I first came to Almaty in 2013 as a Kazakh student. And I had this kind of goal to get to know Almaty, to get to know this new city that I was living in. And so I decided to walk down a different street each day. And when I got home at the end of every day, I would make these maps where I would kind of draw these red lines about every street that I had been on. And I'm very kind of obsessive and systematic like this. So I thought, let me try to walk every street within the center of Almaty. And by doing so, by walking down the streets, um, I really got to know the city. And I started to take buses further and further and further outside of the center to the point where after a few years, I had walked down nearly every street in the city. And I always had a camera, so I always took pictures of the things that kind of stood out to me. Um, whether it was the way people decorated their balconies, or it was the uh, tiles used in the pavement, any kind of small thing that I noticed, I, I took pictures of. For people like me, for Americans who are first visiting Kazakhstan, there are a lot of things that stand out as something strange. So for example, in Almaty, a lot of the trees are painted white. And for people who, who live in Kazakhstan, it's often something that you don't even think about. Well, of course the trees are painted white. But as an American, I had never seen this before in my life. So it was something that I started to explore. Why do they paint the trees white? Um, it turns out that it's quite complicated that it started out as a pest control, um, solution and now it's almost kind of just this tradition. So it started out as this website to document the city and people just started to suggest maybe maybe you could um, start giving walking tours. So about four years ago, four or five years ago, I started to um, advertise these tours on websites like TripAdvisor and um, I started to, to get a lot of clients, people who were interested in exploring the city on foot. Almaty is a city that's really pedestrian friendly, especially the central quarter um, is so green and walkable that it's a perfect place to walk around. Another project I started about two years ago was building off of something that I did on Walking Almaty. One of the things that first really got my attention um, that I photographed in Almaty were these mosaics that you see all over the city. Huge murals made out of these little colorful glass tiles. I started to do research. I started to meet with some of these artists who made mosaics, um, find old books that documented the mosaics, and try to learn about the system and the people who made them. Um, so after a couple of years, I had, um, again, gathered a collection of, of thousands of photographs, and I, I made a website called monumentalalmaty.com, where I shared this kind of catalog of what's called monumental art. So it turns out that it's not just mosaics, but there are stained glass windows there are relief sculptures. There are what are called scraffito murals. Um, so there are all these works of art that were really intensively produced 
from about the 1960s until the 1980s. It's a really, really unique window in the history of art in Kazakhstan. And it's a kind of public art that we don't really have an analog to here in America. If you grew up in a city like Almaty, you see these mosaics every day, but sometimes you can just pass by it without thinking that much about it. And I think when I put all of these photographs and all these stories on one website, people realize, wow, we um, really have a treasure here. Um, and a lot of them are in danger of being lost. So as the projects um, moved on, it moved towards also incorporating some advocacy work. So where I would hear, for example, about a mosaic that was going to be destroyed. And so I have a social media presence. I kind of rallied uh, people who I know, what can we do to save these mosaics? And in quite a few cases, we were able to, to save and, and restore mosaics that otherwise would have been lost. So for many years, I've been the host and writer of a travel program called Discovering Kazakhstan, um, which is a show that's taken us all around the country exploring Kazakh food, Kazakh culture, and the beautiful natural landscapes that you can find in Kazakhstan. And Kazakh TV is a pretty amazing channel with content in English, Russian, and Kazakh. It's a satellite channel, so it's beamed all around the world. It's online, and the idea is to kind of show the rest of the world what Kazakhstan has to offer. Um, but it's also broadcast on Kazakhstani TVs, so we have a really large audience in Kazakhstan as well. And it's been an amazing honor and, and opportunity to have this job because I've been able to see so much of Kazakhstan that a lot of people um, don't have the opportunity to see. You know, so many of the visitors who I meet coming from America, uh, they only get to visit the big cities. They come to Almaty, which is Kazakhstan's former capital. It's the largest city, about 2 million people. They visit uh, what's now called Nur-Sultan, the capital of Kazakhstan. But in so many ways, those two cities are just a small part of what Kazakhstan has to offer. And it, it actually kind of reminds me of, of America in that our countries are so big, right? So Kazakhstan is the ninth largest country in the world. America is vast. And what you find when you travel with the United States is that every region has a different culture, has a different landscape has different cuisine, has different things to offer, right? And if you just visit Los Angeles or New York, you're only going to see one small slice of that. And in a way, that's true about Kazakhstan too. So if you visit the south and the west of Kazakhstan, for example, you're going to hear much more of the Kazakh language. You're going to see much more traditional culture. You're, uh, you have the opportunity to see sides of Kazakh spirituality. So there are many more shrines and mausoleums and mosques that are related to the history of Islam. If you visit the east of the country where they have the Altai Mountains, you can see um, some amazing uh, mountain landscapes with lakes and rivers and um, trekking opportunities. Um, in the west, in the province of Mangastau, it's one of my favorite places, there are these um, landscapes that really remind me of the American West. It looks really just like Utah or Colorado um, in terms of the mesas and the rock formations that you can see. And it can be difficult, I, I have to admit, um, for, for tourists and even for, for Kazakhstanis to be able to explore these places because it's a big country and it's not always easy to get around. But what it is, is it's rewarding. Uh, the more you get out and explore, the more you see the more that it becomes kind of addicting. And I've been exploring Kazakhstan for almost seven years now. And you would think that you would run out of things to see <laughs> at a certain point, but my list just keeps growing. There really is so much to explore. So this spring, I did a series of articles exploring some connections between Kazakhstan and the United States that to find any kind of connections there often seems very serendipitous. The first um, story that I explored was about a man named Mukhtar Awezev. Um, in Kazakhstan, he is a legend. He's probably the most famous Kazakh writer of the 20th century. Um, his novel, which is called The Path of a Bai, is kind of the, the great Kazakh novel. So it was really interesting when I found out that actually one of the last things that Awezev ever wrote was a piece um, called Observations on America. It turns out that in the last year of his life, he was invited by the United States State Department 
to come tour uh, the U.S. and to meet American writers and to travel around the country. This was a time uh, during the Khrushchev thaw when relationships were really warming up um, after kind of a very difficult period under Stalin. And um, America wanted to show their goodwill towards, towards the USSR. And so Aweza spent a whole month traveling around the United States. He visited Yosemite National Park and saw the redwood trees. He came to Los Angeles, which is my hometown, and visited UCLA, where I've worked as a professor. I actually dug through American newspaper archives and found all the, all the articles about the Soviet writers who were traveling around America, and I was able to piece together the story of his visit. Another project that I worked on in that vein, exploring this relationship between our two countries, um, was about a surprising visit by Richard Nixon to Kazakhstan, to Almaty. Um, he had been vice president. He was interested in running for president himself. And so he put together this kind of exploratory tour of the USSR. So he came to Moscow and he had an opportunity to visit Central Asia. I was able to find the memoirs of his translator, of his Russian translator, who goes into fascinating detail about how he stayed at a very humble hotel in Almaty without any hot water, about what he had for breakfast, about the conversations that he had with people at the Green Bazaar in Almaty. And so to imagine this iconic American figure, Richard Nixon, being in these places that I have spent so much time personally, um, was really, really um, an interesting experiment. Um, and then lastly, one third essay that I put together in this project was the story of a man named um, Big Bill Shatov. So Big Bill was uh, an ethnic Russian who spent many years living in the United States where he was kind of a socialist, anarchist agitator. Right before the October Revolution, he went back to Russia. He was one of kind of the, the foot soldiers in the October Revolution. And he was hired by Stalin to build the Turksib Railroad. So the Turksib Railroad was one of the first great Soviet infrastructure projects, and it was in Kazakhstan. It was connecting um, the city of Almaty um, in what it was called Turkestan with Siberia. Um, so Turksib, the Turkestan to Siberia Railroad. And it was just fascinating to me that the man who built it was a guy named Big Bill, who had a history as a hobo and a agitator in the United States. I find it really interesting to, to explore those connections. And I think that it will be interesting for both the Kazakh audience and the American audience to kind of learn about these stories um, that brings us together. Well, I think one thing that initially drew me in to Kazakhstan is just how, how layered and complex um, Kazakhstani culture and history is. You know, Kazakhs were uh, traditionally nomads. So you have this fascinating nomadic culture. There are Turkic people who, who speak a Turkic language called Kazakh. So they share a history with, with um, people like the Turks and other Turkic nations. Um, most Kazakhs practice Islam. So there's this Islamic layer. Um, for, for centuries, there's been a strong influence of, of Russia as Kazakhstan was part of the Russian Empire and later part of the Soviet Union. So there are all these layers of history and language and culture um, that make living there and kind of exploring um, the culture of Kazakhstan really, really rewarding. One thing that really surprises people, um, especially Americans, is just how diverse Kazakhstan is. So many of my visitors come to Kazakhstan and they just look at the people and they look at all the different kinds of faces and they say, I can't believe how, um, how many different kinds of faces that I see on the street. Because especially in a city like Almaty, you know, a large part of the population is, of course, ethnic Kazakh. Um, there are ethnic Russians, but there are Koreans, there are Uzbeks, there are Uyghurs. There are so many different peoples and cultures, cuisines, um, that that is something that people don't really expect to find. And I think it resonates with Americans because we also have a, a very diverse culture. It's something that really brings us together. And I think in, in that way, Kazakh society can sometimes also be a good model um, for the rest of the world and, and for America in that by and large, 
Kazakhstan has been able to present um, a model of, of ethnic harmony. Um, not always perfect, but I think a lot of Americans come away with respect uh, for Kazakhs and for Kazakh society for the kind of hospitable culture, the hospitable society that's been created. Mm -hmm.